Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RoadGamingTech.com video, I want to discuss with you a common issue I see with first-time PC builders. Quite frequently on the channel, I'll get asked questions like, what components are best for a specific budget or a specific purpose? And naturally, follow-up questions will come a few days later after the person's built the rig, like how do they wrangle the most performance out of their respective hardware? With Intel, they'll generally get I'll generally get questions like, what can they get out of, like, say, a 9700K in terms of clock frequency with a specific cooler or with AMD, what should they do uh, to get the most out of the CPU with like precision boost overdrive and those type of questions. And inevitably, I'll kind of go backwards and forwards with the person for a while, but quite a number of them are missing a very key, easy to enable feature to get, well, basically pretty decent performance boost out of the system. And more to the point, actually getting what they paid for and that is xmp or extreme memory profile i will say that that is uh intel's terminology for this technology and uh with amd it can be called a different things depending on the motherboard vendor axmp is something that msi like to call it uh other manufacturers will call it docp i believe that's an asus term and so on and so on and i will show you an example of an amd motherboard in just a moment and how to enable it but we'll start things out with intel but first a quick explanation so what exactly is this well if you do not enable XMP or manually go in and tweak the memory clock frequency and timings, you are basically getting bulk standard DDR4 frequency, which is 2133. Oh, and if you can hear some thunder in the background, I apologize. It's been fairly crappy weather all day. And then I sit down to record. It's just like, hey, you know what we need? We need a thunderstorm. So thanks, weather. Um, anyway, getting back to what I was saying. So if you, for example, have a 3000 megahertz kit and you don't tweak the memory clock frequency, it will basically behave like you only have 2133, which the technical term for that is not good. Um, and it's not quite as big of a problem on Intel CPUs. Uh, because memory clock frequency doesn't impact them as much, but it's still not exactly improving the performance uh, to have slower clock frequencies, obviously. And on the AMD side of the equation, well, their CPUs really like faster memory. Ideally, you would want to have memory that's at the very minimum 21, sorry, 29, 33, but better yet, 3200 or even faster for a Ryzen 3000 CPU. So, let's actually demonstrate uh, why XMP makes a difference and how to enable it. So, let's go into the BIOS, which is right here. Okay, so now that we're actually into the BIOS itself, I'm going to just show you the easy mode for a second. I've disabled XMP profile. Let's quickly save the changes. Um, for you, obviously, you don't need to worry about this. And we have finally a score of 152 frames per second. All right, let's now jump back into BIOS and see what we get with the uh, XMP profile enabled. With the uh, Asus board that I'm using, which is a, a Maximus Extreme, um, then it's very, very, very simple. All you have to do is go to XMP under the easy mode settings and you can simply click enable which well basically does it all for you you simply then click save and exit and then press the ok button and then just basically your system will reboot with the new settings so how about performance then well running the shadow of the tomb raider benchmark with the xmp enabled system and you can see a nice 12 fps game though it would likely be much higher if you were running a different title which was more CPU focused. What if you are on an AMD system and not an Intel system? Well, the basic premise is the same, albeit things are called slightly different names. 
So we are using a Biostar motherboard here that's an X570 GTA Racing motherboard. And if you click on the ONE tab, although of course it will be different depending on the uh, manufacturer of the board, under the memory clock mode setting, um, there is an option which, well, you can see yourself, is labeled XMP. And here you can select different XMP profiles. If you're using an ASUS board, it may be called DOCP, MSI, call it AXMP, and so on and so on. So to reiterate, it's called different things with uh, AMD CPUs, depending on the manufacturer of the motherboard. You should be able to find it with a bit of digging, or just as easily, you can simply look, of course, on your... Uh, uh, in your motherboard manual. Either way, here there are two profiles. We're using 3200 MHz memory, and XMP1 has slightly higher clock frequencies with slightly looser timings, and then obviously the reverse is true of XMP2. You can choose, however, XMP2, for example, and then still go ahead and then manually choose a different uh, memory frequency. So you could go in here and then choose like uh, DDR4-3200, or you could even go in and choose XMP1 uh, and then choose like 3000 megahertz memory, which would obviously make not really too much sense, but you could go in and do it. Naturally, you can also go ahead and start adjusting things like memory voltages, just like on Intel, or sub timings as well. So think of XMP as a good way to just get started on uh, your road to PC tweaking. Or if you're not really in the uh, category of user who wants to start really going in and delving into the settings and tweaking things manually, it also can be thought of as kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing too. At the very least, you should go in to your system BIOS or check the clock frequency of the memory is actually running at the speed or faster than it's rated for because otherwise you're leaving a performance on the table and you're not getting the performance that you actually paid for in the first place. If you have bought your system through an OEM, so whether that's for an enthusiast bill by Overclockers UK or whomever in the US, I know there's a lot of really reputable uh, builders, um, then obviously that's great. Um, most likely you don't have to worry about anything anyway, it's all set up for you. But if you have built your system yourself and it's up and running, first of all, A, congratulations, but B, if you've not done this, you should. Even if you're not uh, interested in overclocking your system, um, because I know some people just don't want to overclock for whatever reason, you should still do this because this is not really overclocking this is just getting the memory at the clock frequency that it should be running at and hopefully this has helped at least someone with all of that said thank you very much for watching the video if you know someone who is planning to build a new system anytime soon then obviously forward this on to them but for now i'm gonna let you all go so take care of yourselves and bye for now